Yeah, I stayed up reading about all those common things that you and I never realized actually had purposes. My head's brimming with all this knowledge. I need to unload it on someone, and you're the perfect volunteer. First things first, food. Gotta have a hearty breakfast. I'll make you some eggs, but before I cook them, look at this. See that little white string? There are a few common misconceptions about what it is, but no, it's not part of a baby chick or anything yucky. Even though it looks kinda unnatural, you actually want to see it in your eggs. It's called chalaza. There are two of them in each egg, and they're like the ropes that hold up a hammock. And this hammock is an egg yolk. The strings keep it from splatting against the shell. If you still don't like the look of it, don't worry, these strings usually vanish after cooking. Plus, they're a sign of freshness. If you don't see a trusty chalaza, you might have left your egg sitting in the fridge for a few days too many. So how do you like them? Scrambled or sunny side up? Before you clear your plate, you need to add a piece of fruit to that breakfast. Want an apple? By the way, do you know where apples come from? I mean, all the apples you've ever eaten? Apple trees, right? And what seeds do those apple trees grow from? Apple seeds, right? Nope. Almost all apple trees don't grow from seeds. That's because seedlings turn out genetically different from their parent trees. Seeds from a golden delicious don't grow a golden delicious tree. All apples you've ever eaten were likely grown on grafted trees. That's when farmers attach apple branches to the cut trunk of another tree. Any other tree. Yeah, a peach tree or even an avocado tree. Frankenstein trees. Before we start our day, let's check the weather. Turn on the TV. Oh, wait, have you ever looked closely at your couch? See those buttons? Once upon a time, furniture was filled with horse hair and straw. Those sorts of filings moved around a lot. Couches could get really lumpy and bumpy, so those deep buttons were used to lock them in place. We use more comfortable fillings than straw now, but we still keep the look for fashion. Okay, go on. You can turn the TV on now. Uh-oh, there's a 60% chance of rain. Looks like we'll need to bring umbrellas. But do you know what this forecast actually means? I've always thought it means that there's, you know, a 60% chance of rain. But this number actually means that 60% of the forecasted area might get rain. How about a quick snack for the road? Oreos, yum! Look at the design on the top of the cookie. In the center, there's a circle topped with a double-armed cross. It's the Nabisco logo, which is a European symbol for quality. Grab a coat too, just in case. Have you ever noticed these letters printed on the zipper of your coat? Or any clothes zippers for that matter? Go on and check right now. I bet I can guess what letters you'll find there. If I'm right, you owe me a soda. Does it say YKK? I had a 50% chance of getting that right. Because about half of all zippers in the world are made by one manufacturer called the YKK Group. So do you owe me a soda or what? Let's head out. I have some errands to run. You don't mind tagging along, do you? First stop, I need to pop into the bank to drop off a check. Not all lines printed on checks are as simple as meets the eye. To make them harder to replicate, a lot of them have tiny writing. It's so small, it just looks like regular black lines, showing you where to sign. Usually, the writing is phrases like original document or authorized signature. Only superheroes with microscopic vision would know, though. On some US pennies, and these coins are pretty rare, you can spot several letters under Lincoln's shoulder. V. D. B. What do they mean? They're the initials of Victor David Brenner. That's the man who designed the very first penny and the exact same portrait of Lincoln that's still in use today. Next, I need a few things from the supermarket. Can you grab a cart? Did you know that these metal loops on the cart actually have a use? They're designed to hold your grocery bags if you have too many to fit inside the cart, or if you need fragile items to stay upright. Do you need anything? Here's my shopping list. 1. Bubble bath. What? It's an essential. You know, I'm not kidding. It actually does have a practical use. And it's not to make a bubble beard when you're bored in the bathtub. Bubble bath was invented so that the foam would sit on the surface of the water and insulate it, keeping the water warmer for longer. I like long baths, so it's very important to me. Next item, 
a toothbrush. Mine's old and needs replacing. The blue indicator bristles are pretty much gone. Oh, did you not know that's what they're for? Yeah, the row of blue bristles on most toothbrushes acts like a timer. Each time you brush your teeth, they get thinner and thinner. And eventually, the blue color gets all worn away. That's when you know you need a refresher. Just to be safe, I'll get you a new brush too. All right, I've got everything I need. Let's go home. Uh Uh-oh, it started raining. Good thing we grabbed those umbrellas. It seems like no one really knows what the metal point at the top of an umbrella is for. See, now that we're out of the rain, there are water drops all over the fabric. When we fold our umbrellas up and put them in the car, they'll soak everything they touch. But not if we tap the metal tip on the ground and shake all the water off. Convenient, right? Into the car we get. That line of black dots around the windshield always bugged me, but I finally found out what it's for. It's called a frit. It shields the glue that bonds the windshield to the car from ultraviolet light. The dots, though, they just make it look nice. Let's turn on the radio and listen to some tunes. You probably see that symbol on the radio's power button pretty much every day. It's also on computers, microwaves, game consoles, and so many other things. But I never thought about what it means. It dates way back before most of the technology that uses it. Turns out it's actually binary code that says standby power state. Cool, huh? Well, those errands made me work up an appetite. Here's a deal. I'll do the dishes while you cook some spaghetti for dinner. Everyone always says it's impossible to measure out the right amount of spaghetti. It's so hard to figure out what one portion looks like. But none of us should struggle with it because there's a tool for this exact purpose right under our noses. In the middle of your spaghetti serving ladle, there's a hole perfectly sized to measure out one serving. No more leftovers from now on. Everyone always uses the tops of plates and bowls, but as I'm washing them, it reminds me of all the clever uses for the bottom sides. For example, the rough rim under plates can sharpen knives. Watch this. All of your knives are super dull and can barely cut these tomatoes. Now, if I take them and run them along the bottom of this plate a few times, voila! Fresh as new. They slice the tomatoes like butter. And this groove here in the bottom of your mug, it has a purpose too. One you'll probably be very thankful for even if you don't know about it yet. This groove is specifically designed for mugs you put in the dishwasher upside down. Without it, a puddle of water would pool inside the rim and spill all over your feet when you take the mug out. Trust me, this little gap is your best friend. Oh, before you use that frying pan, have you salted the oil? Yep. You shouldn't only salt your pasta water, but also the frying oil. A pinch of flour will also work. Both absorb the moisture from the food you put in and stop the boiling oil from splattering. But do watch out because salt might lower the temperature at which oil starts to smoke. It probably won't be an issue unless you're boiling big vats of this stuff, though. That's enough new information for one day, right? Let's finish this great day with a big spaghetti dinner. There are two sides to every story. Just like to a regular cotton pad, two different textures to be more precise. One is smooth, and you're supposed to use it for more sensitive areas of your face, for example, the eyes. The rougher side can help you remove makeup and clean your face in less sensitive areas, like the forehead. If you like having greenery in your home, you've probably noticed the flower pots have holes at the bottom. These holes are the reason your green friends live a happy life. They're extremely important for water drainage. Thanks to these holes, you'll avoid stagnant water buildup that can eventually ruin your plant. Also, thanks to those holes, roots can grow and expand beyond the limits of your pot. Have you noticed aviator sunglasses mostly have green lenses? It has something to do with their origin. First, they showed up in the 1930s. Before that, pilots had goggles to protect their eyes while they were in the air. High altitudes with glaring sun and sub-zero temperatures were a real test for their eyes. The goggles helped them with those issues, but there was another one. Since the temperature differences between the air outside and within the goggles were big, the lenses would fog up and obscure the pilot's view. So, the company Bausch & Lohm 
came up with teardrop lenses surrounded by a light metal frame. These lenses were dark green because this tint cuts out blue light, which is also a problem for pilots when they're flying above the cloud line. Plus, green lenses also reduce glare and improve contrast and sharpness. Holes in the side of your Converse sneakers? Hmm… Are those really necessary? Well, they allow air to enter your shoe so your feet can stay cool. You can also use them to style up your shoes and tie them in different ways, too. There are two reasons plastic bottles have grooves. First, if you're drinking cold water and it's hot outside, you'll see there's a lot of condensation on your bottle. Or maybe if you're playing some sport or working out. Your hands are sweaty and if a bottle had a smooth surface, it would be more difficult to grip it. So the ridges are there to improve your hand grip. The second reason is that because of these ridges, manufacturers can use thinner plastic. That means they need less material in overall production. And that plastic is still firm enough for the bottle to maintain its shape. Wooden coat hangers are not just there to look nice. Since they're made of cedar wood, they bring a nice scent to your closet. Plus, they repel bugs. They're also quite firm, so they come in handy for heavy clothes such as jackets. And it's hard to damage them. So they'll serve you longer. You may have noticed there's a colored square at the bottom of your toothpaste. These blocks mostly come in blue, red, green, and black. They are some sort of eye marks, since they help manufacturing machines at the assembly line recognize where and when to cut the toothpaste and seal the end of the tube. Some boots have loops at their top and back. Looks like a fashion statement, doesn't it? Or maybe it's something that manufacturers add for fun. But those loops actually have their purpose. With them, you can pull the shoe up when trying to wear it. Plus, you can easily hang them or use the loop for better support for the laces. Confession time! Remember those attachments your vacuum cleaner came with? Did you also put them somewhere aside and never use them again? They're actually pretty helpful when you're cleaning the house because you can use them for particular areas that are sometimes hard to reach with the regular attachment. We all know what the vegetable peeler is for, but besides peeling the skin of carrots or potatoes, you can use it for onions too. It may be faster than doing it with a knife, plus it will save you some onion tears. Some sweatshirts have something pretty specific in the neck area. A V-shaped stitch you can see in the middle of the collar. The ribbed insert, similar to the ribbing at the hem and the sleeves, would allow the owner to put the garment on more easily and it wouldn't even lose shape. The V insert would stretch so a person wearing the sweatshirt could get their head through the neck. Its purpose was also to absorb sweat. In its early versions, sweatshirts had both the back and the front of the collars. Through time, they lost the back one, and this V insert became something decorative since manufacturers started to stitch a V at the collar without using the ribbed material they had added before. Brightly colored squares or circles you see on food packages aren't an indication of vitamins, minerals, or certain flavors that food contains. And nope, it's not some secret code consumers are supposed to crack. It's actually for printing engineers. They're called process control patches or printer's color blocks. During the process of printing the food packaging, manufacturers use those colored blocks to check if the printing ink is correct. They compare the color of blocks they print to make sure the brand they print for has a consistent and recognizable quality all over the world. The majority of printers only use four colors, yellow, magenta, cyan, and black. Some printers have additional colors, such as green, orange, and violet. That's why you sometimes see multiple circles on certain packages. They test each ink color. Margins in notebooks. They're not there as some sort of a guide for taking notes and writing. Someone came up with a potential solution that was supposed to protect the written work from, well, rats. They used to be pretty common residents in people's homes. They are known for their diet, including basically anything, like paper, for example. So, people started adding wide margins as an appetizer that was supposed to keep rats full. This way, they wouldn't want to get to the main dish, the written pages. Suits have a buttonhole close to the top of the lapel. 
manufacturers sew it shut so you can't open it without ruining your suit. And when you compare it to the other lapel, you see that one is completely smooth, without any clues. You won't find such an unpartnered buttonhole on a suit jacket only. Camp shirts, pea coats, and some other clothing pieces have them too. And they have to do with the history of lapels. The earliest ones showed up at the beginning of the 19th century. Before this, men mostly wear frocks with high collars. They would button them all the way up to the top. During hot days, they would relax the button stance, turn down the collars, and leave the top button undone. It was a relief from the swelter, plus their folded over laps would be symmetrical at the chest, and today, we recognize that as a lapel. People stopped using that buttonhole after they came up with the lapel, unless it was for some formal occasion. Like, for example, when you wanted to put a flower in there. That's why suit makers left it as a fashion feature. Tea bags. It's pretty easy to guess what they're for, but they come in handy if you have smelly feet after a long day in your shoes. Just pop tea bags, unused of course, in your shoes during the night. By the time you wake up, tea bags are going to effectively absorb all the unwanted odors. Binder clips can also have a helpful purpose besides their main one. You can clip your money to keep it together. Same is true for paper clips. If your favorite bracelet broke and you're looking for a way to hold it on, a paper clip might help. Just hook one through each end of the bracelet, twist it tightly, and your bracelet is good to go. Some people even see colors as letters and numbers, or hear them. Those who live closer to the Arctic Circle can name different shades of snow, because that's what they see all the time. To others, it's just white. Some languages only have general names for colors. For example, dark stands for cool hues like black, blue, and green. Colors like white, red, orange, and yellow are all called warm. Your eye processes more variations of warmer colors than cooler ones. There's a tribe in Australia who describes texture, the function of an object, and how it feels instead of its color. They don't have any names for colors at all. The Kandoshi, who live on the banks of the Amazon River in Peru, don't have a word that would describe the very concept of color. Instead, the name of some yellow bird will be used to describe the yellow color. Any ripe fruit will stand for red, and unripe fruit for dark green. A lot of people lose their ability to perceive some colors as they get older. By around the age of 70, their eye lenses become yellowish. This natural yellow filter they look through doesn't let them tell blue from purple and yellow from green. Half of your brain is hardwired to process visual information. A much smaller part is left to perceive flavor. That's why the color of food or drink can boost or curb your appetite. You'll always choose the reddest apple because your brain perceives it as the sweetest and ripest. There are no naturally blue foods, so you're least attracted to them and can even fear them. That's why installing a blue light in your fridge or eating from blue plates is a great way to eat less. You'll always choose brighter foods and vegetables because they're associated with a richer flavor. Eating them makes you feel healthier and happier. Yellow can boost your appetite as you associate it with energy and excitement. White can trick you into eating more and paying less attention to what you're munching on. That's because white food seems more harmless in terms of calories. If you eat from a white plate, you're more likely to overeat as it makes your food look brighter. Your brain also remembers the color of food wrapping. If you put salt and vinegar chips into a cheese and onion package, you might not even notice the difference in flavor while snacking on them. Food companies know that you'll eat more of whatever they're selling when it comes in different colors and flavors. Red gives you courage and strength for physical work. Yellow makes you happier and more productive and confident. Green brings balance and harmony to the office environment. Your eyes also love this color. They don't need time to adjust to it. Orange gives you a sense of comfort and warmth, so it's perfect for an office lounge. Birds, fish, and many mammals see the entire color spectrum in all its glory, just like humans. For some animals, good color vision is crucial. Without it, they won't tell ripe fruit from unripe green fruit. Whenever we yawn, 
We use the muscles in our mouth and tongue, and the contact can squeeze some of the saliva producing glands. As a result, we might squirt a tiny stream of saliva without even noticing it. I had a friend in college who could do it at will. It was impressive. It turns out that saliva is basically filtered blood. Blood is processed thanks to special glands, and special cells absorb its properties. After that, the blood becomes saliva. People with red colored hair are 1% of all people. 2% are natural blondes. Yeah, most people you see with these hair colors have dyed hair. Black is the most common hair color in the world. Your memory is affected by your body position. For example, you're much more likely to recall a situation where you wave to someone if you stand and wave again. Most scientists agree that tears that appear out of emotion are a unique human feature. No other animal is capable of crying because of sadness or joy. The pupils narrow and expand in order to control the incoming light. If there's a lot of light, they narrow the passage for light so as not to harm the vision. In the dark, the pupils expand to capture as much light as possible. The tongue has a lot of muscles, and some of them can strain only when you're learning a new language. A human bite almost always becomes infected because of all the bacteria that live in our mouth. In this sense, we're quite close to hyenas. Your bones are designed to be used a lot daily, and some of them can absorb two or even three times your body weight. That's impressive, but your teeth are even stronger. Even if you brush your teeth twice a day and never forget about mouthwash, your mouth still stays one of the dirtiest parts of the human body. Ugh! Millions of bacteria live inside it. The good news is that most of these bacteria are good for the body and protect it from bad bacteria and viruses. In the morning, you're taller than in the evening. While sleeping, you're no longer affected by the force of gravity and your spine stretches. Too bad you become shorter by daytime, though. A roller coaster actually tosses your organs around, so you feel like your stomach's falling down. It's actually flipping inside your body. You think your fingerprints are the only unique thing in your body? Well, they're not. Your tongue print and your smell are also one of a kind. If anyone sniffs you, it's reason enough to get suspicious. If all your blood vessels were stretched into a single line, boy, that would hurt, but it would go around the earth more than twice. An impressive feat that you wouldn't see because, well, you can't live without your blood vessels. Toothache and headache are linked together thanks to the trigeminal nerve. It goes through the jaw right to the head so that when you feel tooth pain, it usually goes hand in hand with that in your head. You lose calories doing literally anything. A healthy eight hour sleep, for example, makes you lose up to 800 calories. And yes, you spend energy even while eating. A person can go without food for more than 20 days. However, if you don't sleep for 10 days, your body will simply stop functioning. Talking about sleep, the average person forgets 90% of their dreams. And maybe that's a good thing. Otherwise, imagine how crazy the world would have been. The color of your dreams is affected by the TV you watched as a kid. If you're of an older generation that watched black and white TV, you'll see monochrome dreams more often than not. If you're used to color television, your dreams will also be colorful. Out of every 10,000 people on Earth, one person has their organs mirrored or reversed from their usual and customary positions. That is, their liver would be larger on the left side and the kidney would be a bit superior to the left one. People with light-colored eyes, blue or green, are better at tolerating pain than those with dark eyes. Scientists think it might be related to melanin that affects the color of the eyes. The length of your foot is similar to that of your forearm. Don't believe me? Go check. I'll wait right here. Nah. We have seven major holes in our bodies, our mouths, our ears, nose, eyes, and our, you know, down under. Hey, we're Australian. G'day, Mike. We're also a Taurus, if you dig geometry. A human ring, a donut, a life buoy, or even a bagel. Mmm, bagel. Don't forget the schmear. Seriously, counting the pores in your skin and the rest, there'd be millions of holes though. Trillions more likely. Holy cow, we're holy. Bodies throw thermal radiation off as a tiny amount of light, 
This light is 1,000 times less visible than normal light, so you're not a torch yet. Breathe in deep through your nose. Air only goes up one nostril at a time, and our nostrils take turns at it. Sharing is caring. Our brains tell us when our bodies hurt, but they can't feel pain themselves. There are no pain receptors in the brain. That feeling of your stomach rising is what actually happens. Hold on. Every human has a unique smell except for identical twins. They share the same DNA and the same smell. Our fingerprints aren't just for identifying us to the police if we've done something wrong. The ridges allow our skin to stretch to prevent damage and improve our sense of touch. When you're scared, you can become a lot stronger than you were before. Maybe not lift a car strong, but you won't feel pain or fatigue as quickly. The Empire State Building's tower was designed to serve as a docking station for dirigibles. At that time, people believed that these airships would become the main means of transportation in the future. The project included gangplanks, check-in and customs offices, and so on. But then the engineers realized that the wind up there was too strong for their plans, and they gave up on their idea. Angel Falls the largest uninterrupted waterfall on the planet is more than twice as tall as the Empire State Building. During the dry season, the falling water sometimes evaporates before it reaches the ground. One of the most mysterious sounds ever heard on Earth was the bloop. It occurred in 1997 and resembled the noise of marine animals. But the volume was too great for a sound produced by a living creature. The bloop continued for one minute. It started from a low rumble and then rose in frequency. Antarctica might just look like a giant field of ice, but there's actually a huge continent underneath. That means that it has volcanoes, mountains, and valleys, like any other continent. Scientists have recently discovered that the Antarctic landmass has the lowest point on the planet, as well as huge mountain ranges. If any of the numerous volcanoes were to erupt, it would melt a huge part of the surface ice and increase the spill of ice into the ocean. The sea level would rise and flood coastal areas around the world. The ocean waters would also be disrupted, putting marine life at risk, though all of these volcanoes are dormant at the moment. Each day on the South Pole lasts six months on this continent. The South Pole only has a single sunset and sunrise across an entire year. Early Earth might have been purple, not green. There's a theory that ancient microbes used molecules rather than chlorophyll to absorb sunlight. These molecules likely gave living organisms a violet tint. During the Stone Age, the entire population of Central Europe was around 1,500 people, which means they would all fit on a mid-sized cruise liner these days. Astronomers have figured out that the Milky Way weighs around 1.5 trillion solar masses, and one solar mass is the mass of our Sun. A tiny part of this weight is a supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy and 200 billion stars. The rest is dark matter, mysterious and invisible. If all sheets of Arctic ice and glaciers melted at the same time, the sea level would rise for the height of a 26-story building. Under black or UV light, ripening bananas look bright blue. That's because of the chlorophyll that's breaking down when the fruit is ripening. Because of tectonic plate movements, the Pacific Ocean shrinks every year, and the Atlantic Ocean gets bigger by the same amount. These days, there are only two ice sheets in the world left after the planet's last ice age. The first is the Greenland Ice Sheet. The second, the Antarctic Ice Sheet, is enormous. It's the size of Mexico and the continental U.S. combined. Tsunami waves often go unnoticed. They don't rise for more than several inches above the surface until they reach shallow waters. When the ocean is deep, though, they can travel as fast as a long-distance passenger airplane. Corals that live in shallow waters produce their own protection from the sun. Without it, sunlight would harm the algae living inside them. To protect these algae, which are the main source of food for the corals, they fluoresce. This process makes proteins that act as sunscreen. Almost 90% of the volcanic activity on Earth happens in the oceans. The South Pacific has the largest concentration of volcanoes people know about. There's one volcano cluster that has 1,133 volcanic cones. 
All of them are active and cooped up in an area the size of New York State. The Zemchuk Canyon in the middle of the Bering Sea is the largest underwater canyon ever discovered. There are more treasures and artifacts at the bottom of the ocean than in all museums in the world combined. In 1900, one of the biggest hurricanes struck near Central America and in the Gulf of Mexico. It then went as far as Florida and Texas and is considered to be the most devastating hurricane in the United States history. They first detected it on August 27th and it lasted for many days. By the time it reached the Texas coast, the storm had turned into a Category 4 hurricane. Hurricanes are categorized on wind speed and intensity using something called a Saffir Simpson scale. There are five different categories from one to five, with one being the weakest and five being the strongest. The people of Galveston had less than four days to prepare for the arriving storm that even stretched out to Oklahoma and Kansas. The Great Hurricane then made its way to the Great Plains and turned towards the Great Lakes, New England, and reached southeastern Canada. The storm was so bad that more than 3,600 homes were damaged even though they were sturdy enough to withstand the storm. Given the population numbers back then, it was equivalent to hundreds of thousands of houses destroyed, if not millions. Spotted Lake, Canada. They call it the most magical spot in Canada. In winter and spring, this is just a regular lake that looks like any other. But try going there in the summer when the water starts to evaporate. It'll feel as if you've entered a different world, a polka-dotted landscape with blue, green, and yellow spots. Over the summer, there are over 300 pools there, and they all look magical. Over the centuries, people believed each of them had different healing properties. Oh, and the explanation for the vibrant colors is pure science. Each of them has a high concentration of different minerals. We live inside the sun. Its atmosphere stretches far beyond its visible surface, and even though Earth is 93 million miles away from the star, it's still within reach of the sun's atmosphere. Auroras happen when charged particles from the sun get caught by Earth's magnetic field and crash into the upper atmosphere near the poles. Our planet is gradually slowing down the speed of its rotation. It happens at an unhurried pace of 17 milliseconds per 100 years. Because of this, our days are becoming longer, and still, only after 140 million years, a day on Earth will last 25 hours. Earth's southernmost continent, Antarctica, is the only the fifth largest one, but it contains almost 70% of the planet's fresh water and 90% of the world's ice. Antarctica is also considered to be a desert. Lots of rocks on Earth have a Martian origin. Scientists analyze the chemical content of some meteorites found in the Sahara Desert, Antarctica, and other places. It turned out that these rocks had arrived from the Red Planet. The largest sandcastle in the world is located in Denmark. 30 sand sculptors who created it used more than 5,000 tons of sand. To make it more durable, they added 10% of clay, together with a layer of glue. They built it to stand tall against long and stormy winters. Some photons that don't get absorbed are re-emitted, and their wavelength determines the color we see. When you expose a material to sunlight or photons of higher energy, it can damage its chromophores, which is why they won't be able to emit photons at certain wavelengths. Red materials fade in sunlight the most. Their chromophores emit red light in a way they mop up photons of the rest of the wavelengths. From 60 to 100 tons of space dust drift down to our planet's surface every day. These tiny cosmic particles are mostly released by comets, which are usually made of dust and ice. When the sun turns this ice into vapor, the remaining dust travels down to Earth. You'd need a drop of liquid, a state-of-the-art laser 3D printer, and a couple of hours of work to make the tiniest fidget spinner ever. Its width will be smaller than that of your hair strand. At least researchers at Oak Ridge National Laboratory managed to do just that. A double-stuffed Oreo cookie aren't double-stuffed, in fact. A math teacher weighed 10 regular Oreos, 10 double-stuffed Oreos, 10 mega stuffed Oreos. Turns out, double stuffed Oreos are only 1.86 stuffed Oreos. Chipotle peppers aren't some special type of pepper. They're good old jalapenos. Dried and smoked jalapeno is Chipotle. 
In its gaseous form, oxygen is colorless and doesn't have any odor. But when it's liquid or solid, this substance looks pale blue. After being caught by a black hole, a star gets ripped apart by its enormous gravitational forces. Some parts of the star's remains hurtle into the black hole. The rest, in the form of a huge jet of plasma, is ejected with such force that it travels hundreds of light years away. Not so long ago, scientists decided the Dino's family tree had to be redrawn for the first time in 130 years. Apparently, two species of dinosaurs had to be grouped together from the very beginning. Those were the lizard-hipped meat-eaters like T. rex and bird-hipped vegetarians such as the Stegosaurus. A camel can drink up to 30 gallons of water in a bit more than 10 minutes. This water is stored in the animal's bloodstream. As for its fatty hump, it provides the camel with nourishment when there's little food around. Some sea animals like salmon or turtles use our planet's magnetic field to find their way home. Your lungs not only help you breathe, but they also produce blood cells. These cells are responsible for the clotting which stops bleeding. The lungs make more than 10 million of these tiny cells per hour. Only two letters never appear on the periodic table. Those are J and Q. Spin a ball when you drop it and it'll fly through the air while falling. This phenomenon is known as the Magnus effect. You can see it at work in different sports, for example, tennis or baseball. Anatidaphobia is the fear that at any point, somewhere in the world, a duck or a goose may be watching you. The person isn't necessarily afraid that the duck or goose will get close to them or even touch them. They just don't like the feeling of being watched. It was first described in a comic strip to show you how anyone can be afraid of anything. Anything can be a phobia. A duck just watching my every move would certainly give me the heebie-jeebies. I might just quack up. Your favorite fruit candies may be shining because they're covered with carnauba wax. Many fruits, especially apples, have a thin layer of this wax too. Not only can it make the candies and fruit appear glossy, but it also makes your car shine. Peaches and nectarines seem different, but in fact, they're pretty much the same fruit. If the fluffiness gene is dominant, we get peaches. If not, we get smooth nectarines. Crows are pretty good at recognizing people's faces and have been found to remember people for a long time. This could be a good or a bad thing, depending on how nice you are to them. You don't want to come across a crow that's holding a grudge against you. You probably can't tell which crow is which very easily, so it might be better to play it safe and just give them a little wave. In the city of Yoro in Central America, they have an annual event known as the Reign of Fish. Not that the locals get a choice for it anyways. Every year in May or June, a torrential rainstorm rolls through the town, leaving a mass of fish flopping around in the streets. The phenomenon is believed to be caused by water spouts or water tornadoes, which drop the fish far from their home. Seafood delivery for free? Yes, please. A single strand of spaghetti onto your fork has a name. It's called a spaghetto. In the Italian language, an I at the end of a word means that it's plural, while an O is singular. This goes for all types, like gnocco instead of gnocchi, fettuccino instead of fettuccini, and raviolo for a single parcel of goodness. Water can freeze and boil at the same time. This is called the triple point. That's when a substance can be solid, liquid, and gaseous at the same time. But there's only one pressure temperature that can make it possible. We're used to ranch dressing being white, but in reality, producers usually add titanium dioxide to make it as white as your sunscreen. Oh, sunscreen producers add some titanium dioxide to their products too. Same with Caesar and blue cheese dressings. Our moon used to have an atmosphere. Several volcanic eruptions happened on Earth's natural satellite around 4 billion years ago. They released immense volumes of gas, trillions of tons. It was so much that the gas didn't have enough time to escape into space. 
That's how an atmosphere was formed. Cold water heats up faster than hot. The speed of this process depends on the temperature difference between the liquid and its surroundings. That's why cold water needs less time to absorb heat, but it doesn't mean it'll boil faster than hot water. Zealandia is a drowned continent in the Pacific Ocean. It's often described as a continental fragment or a microcontinent. Its area is almost 2 million square miles, about half as big as the US. It went underwater about 23 million years ago. New Zealand is Zealandia's largest part that remains above sea level. People are still evolving. Scientists have been tracking several millions of human anomalies. It turns out, some harmful genes are slowly but surely getting filtered out of human DNA. Stars look as if they're twinkling because of the turbulence in Earth's atmosphere. It makes the light from the stars move in a different direction before reaching our eyes, and this looks as if the light is shaking. It takes water 1,000 years to complete its continuous journey around the world. The whole process is known as the Global Ocean Conveyor Belt. Bismuth is a brittle, shiny white metal with a pink tinge. If you melt it and then let it cool really slowly, it'll form iridescent cubic crystals. Those Skittles and M&M candies are colored with beetles. Red food dye is made of carmine, which is made with cochineal beetles. Red lipsticks are made with these beetles too. The rocks, metals, and other minerals and things that make up the planet are packed into the ground more tightly in certain places than in others. This has surprising consequences. Gravity varies slightly depending on where you are. How high up you are also has an effect, so if you're at the top of Mount Everest, you'd also weigh slightly less. Don't look down! One scientist has a theory that a substance existed in ancient microbes before chlorophyll – that's the thing that makes plants green – evolved on Earth. This substance reflected sunlight as red and violet colors, which combined to make purple. If true, the young Earth may have been teeming with strange, purple-colored critters before all the green stuff appeared. Apples taste better when they're sliced because they're exposed to oxygen. It activates the enzyme called polyphenol oxidase, responsible for ripening and visible browning. The same thing happens when you hit an apple. The oxygen enters the apple through tiny cracks and it starts to ripen. Are you into white chocolate? Well, it's actually not even close to real chocolate. It's basically a mixture of sugar, milk, vanilla, and cocoa butter. Cocoa butter isn't enough for chocolate. It should contain chocolate liquor or powder. The only product that never expires even if you don't store it in the fridge is honey. It has a low pH and lots of sugar. That's why organisms that cause spoiling can't live in honey. If two pieces of the same kind of metal touch in space, they bond and get stuck together. It doesn't happen on Earth because water and air keeps pieces apart. People are more honest when they're tired. That's why most confessions are made during late-night conversations. Firefighters usually extinguish flames with wet water. It's water mixed with special wetting agents. These are chemicals that help water soak into objects and spread everywhere more easily. The Sun is an average-sized star, and still it could fit 1,300,000 Earths. The star is also 333,000 times as heavy as our planet. People have been able to spell their emails in Morse code since 2004. That's when a new symbol, at, was added to the code for the first time. The character is actually called a comet and consists of the A and C signals with no break in between. Now, there are things about nature that you know for sure. Or don't you? Let's check how much you know about the incredible world we live in. How many of the 14 points will you guess? Let us know! The Great Pyramid of Giza was built when mammoths still roamed the Earth. Myth or fact? It's actually a fact. The most famous pyramid in the world had been constructed about 500 years before woolly mammoths went extinct, approximately 4,000 years ago. 
their last known habitat was the cold and deserted Wrangell Island in the Arctic Sea, which might not have been as cold then as it is today. There are more trees on Earth than stars in the Milky Way. Is it myth or fact? It's a fact. Scientists used to believe there were about 4 billion trees on our planet. But more recent studies have shown that there are over 3 trillion of them, making it 420 trees per person. As for the stars in our galaxy, there are only about 100 billion, which is 30 times fewer than the trees on Earth alone. The trees you see are all individual ones, myth or fact. This is false, in fact. 90% of the trees on Earth are interconnected by mycelium filaments. They send warning signals when in danger and exchange nutrients through them. It's kind of like the underground internet. Also, there are organisms like Pando, for example, which is the largest single living being on the planet. It looks like a dense forest of quaking aspens. In fact, it's basically a single giant tree, with its roots being interconnected underground. We drink the same water dinosaurs used to drink hundreds of millions of years ago. Myth or fact? Actually, it is. Only a small portion of the water on our planet has evaporated for good. The rest of it is constantly renewed. So, mammoths, dinosaurs, and whatever came before them billions of years ago drank and swam in the same water we see today. Not to mention what else they did in the water. Unfortunately, the water doesn't keep information about those ancient creatures for us to find out more about them. Lightning never strikes the same place twice. Are you willing to bet on that? Myth or fact? If you aren't, good for you. Lightning may strike the very same spot as many times as it wants. It might seem random, but the electrical discharge from the sky is pulled toward the tallest objects in the thunderstorm area. Also, the material this object is made of matters too. It's by no chance that lightning rods on buildings are mostly made of copper and aluminum alloys. These metals are some of the most conductive materials, so they pull lightning very efficiently. All deserts are hot. Now this one's easy, right? Myth or fact? If you guess it's a myth, then right you are. Deserts are qualified not for their temperature, but for the presence or absence of growth and life in them. The most well-known desert is the Sahara, of course, and it is indeed very hot. The actual largest desert in the world is Antarctica, which is almost twice the size of the Sahara Desert. And you wouldn't call it even lukewarm. It's a polar desert, and there are several others on our planet. For example, Greenland. There's enough gold underground to cover the entire planet in a thick layer. Would you believe that? Well, you should, because it's true. Since 1950, humanity has mined nearly 200,000 tons of gold. If we made a cube out of all this metal, it would be 70 feet high and wide. Recent data from scientists confirm that there are huge reserves of gold in the Earth's core. The metal is enough to cover the whole planet, and people might have gold up to their knees. The problem is, we just can't mine it from there. Hey, I don't mine if you don't. The Moon and Mars are better mapped than the Earth's oceans. Now, this can't be true, can it? Actually, it can. We have a detailed map of the Moon and Mars, although we're still discovering surprises on their surfaces granted. Still, over 80% of the Earth's oceans are unmapped and unexplored. We can't study the oceans properly because of pressure, cold, and lack of light underneath billions of tons of water. The lava is always red. What other color can it be, right? Myth or fact? (laughs) 
myth. Usually lava is really red or orange because it's basically molten rock from the deep bowels of our planet. But there's one volcano in Indonesia whose lava is blue and luminescent. Only at night, though. During the day, it looks normal. No mystery about it, just tons of sulfuric gas. This volcano also has the largest acidic crater lake in the world. The water there is so turquoise, you want to jump in immediately, but you probably guessed you should never do that. The fire on that volcano is also blue, the largest blue fire in the world, rising up to 16 feet high. Ever seen a gas stove burning? Here, the principle is basically the same. You can see a rainbow at night, too. Is it myth or a fact? It's true. And there's even a name for this phenomenon, a moonbow. Also called a lunar rainbow, this event occurs extremely rarely. It's similar to a regular rainbow, except when it appears on a clear moony night after a rain shower. There's a thing called a fire rainbow, myth or fact. You bet! It's a beautiful phenomenon when the clouds in the sky are painted all the colors of the rainbow, looking like a fiery, multicolored cascade. It only occurs when the conditions are right, and those are very specific. It's close to the equator, the weather is clear, there are feather-like clouds in the sky, the sun is higher than 58 degrees above the horizon. Such clouds are made of ice crystals. When the sun's rays hit them, the particles refract the light and create a rainbow. Wow! There are rainbow trees, myth or fact. If I made you doubt this, I'm glad, because this one is not Photoshop. This is the rainbow eucalyptus, and their bark may literally have all the rainbow colors. These eucalyptuses shed their bark at different times each year. Every time the old section goes off, the tree first reveals bright green bark that was hiding underneath. And then it may turn any color. There's a whole set of hues. Orange, maroon, blue, even purple. Stones can move on their own. Myth or fact? Well, you'd be right to believe me. There's a desert plain in California where rocks move around of their own will. Once this plain used to be the bottom of a lake, but then it dried out and became an arid wasteland. Sometimes, rains fall here, flooding the entire valley. When night comes, the temperature drops and the water is covered with a thin layer of ice. When it gets warmer again, the ice breaks into segments and the wind pushes them around the place. Some of these ice shards take small rocks with them. When the ice melts for good and the water evaporates, the only thing that remains are trails left by the rocks, as if they'd moved on their own. Mud puddles can move around. Myth or fact? In fact, a single mud puddle in the world also travels as it wants, and nobody still knows why. It moves at a pace of about 20 feet per year, and it seems to have started its journey near the San Andreas Fault in California. People have tried to stop its march, but couldn't. So far, this creeping natural disaster isn't showing any signs of stopping on its own, either. So, there's your pesky, problematic puddle to ponder. Apples you usually grab in the supermarket seem super fresh, but they can be up to a year old. It's all about how they're stored. First, they're covered with wax. Next, the wax is dried with hot air. And finally, the apples go into cold storage. Sloths are better at breath-holding than dolphins. Those lazy buddies can slow their heart rate and hold their breath this way for up to 40 minutes. If they watched any breathtaking series, they'd literally breathe once per episode. If you look at any old photograph, you'll see that people didn't have those big smiles we love to have in the photos today. First, photographers preferred to keep things serious. So, instead of cheese, people would say prunes to keep their lips tight, and other things. Earth is not the only planet with water. 
Scientists from NASA strongly believe one of Jupiter's moons, Europa, has an ocean with twice as much water as we have on our planet. It's hidden under a thick layer of ice. Even Mars has some liquid water flowing. Cicadas are some of the biggest flying insects you can find out there. Most species are not that impressive, only about 1 to 2 inches long. Only. But the largest one, known as the Empress Cicada, has a body length of about 3 inches. In comparison, its wingspan reaches a whopping 8 inches. That's a really big bug. Not all goats peacefully munch on meadow grass. Some of them prefer climbing trees for food. Meet Moroccan goats, a natural phenomenon unique to North Africa. The thing is, they're way more attracted to argan tree fruits than to regular grass. That's quite understandable. Those fruits look just like golden apples. These goats are quite agile, so they easily climb up the trees to get the juicy treats. And they rarely need help from their nanny. There's a creature that can technically live forever. You see, there's a species of jellyfish known as Tursepera dorida, or however you pronounce their name on the screen. Well, those guys have a superpower of respawning. So whenever they get any sort of physical damage or something, those jellyfish reset themselves back to the polyp stage and start all over again. Now, let's test you. Are there more trees on Earth or stars in the Milky Way? If your answer is stars, sorry, you're wrong. According to scientists' estimations, there are up to 100 billion stars in our galaxy and about 3 trillion trees on Earth. Now, that's impressive. Pluto still hasn't made a complete orbit since it was discovered. And now imagine that it was found back in 1930. It takes about 248 years for Pluto to make a full orbit around the Sun. By the way, Mercury is the fastest. It takes only about 88 days for this planet to make a full trip. However, Pluto will complete its first full orbit since its discovery in 2178. I can't wait. One more fun fact about planets, the dwarf planet Haumea has a very peculiar shape. It looks exactly like a potato. It's about the same size as Pluto and has rings similar to those Saturn has. If you ever want to find it, it's located beyond the orbit of Neptune. Nachos aren't some ancient Mexican food. They were invented less than 100 years ago. Ignacio Anya, nicknamed Nacho, is said to have created this dish in the 1940s. There's a nice story behind nachos. A regular customer got really hungry and asked if Ignacio could bring her and her three friends something different that day. He saw how hungry the ladies were and decided to cook something quick for them. He had to improvise using available ingredients, so he put some tortillas, grated loads of cheese on top of them, and heated the dish from above. To make the dish more savory, he added some jalapeno peppers on top. Mamie Finan, that very regular customer, asked what the name of the unusual snack was. Ignacio didn't think long and said the name was Nacho Special. Oranges aren't necessarily orange. If grown in subtropical regions, the climate isn't cold enough to break down the chlorophyll, so the fruit peel stays yellow or greenish. Such oranges usually get treated with ethylene gas that can help turn the oranges orange. Orange you impressed with that? Okay, it's time for a little riddle for you. What's common between peanut butter and an engagement ring? Both of them contain diamonds. Scientists have learned how to turn peanut butter into diamonds. They extracted the oxygen from CO2. They got the carbon and then put it under intense pressure. And in the end, they got diamonds. In a gif, I suppose. Pufferfish, also known as blowfish, are famous for two things. It's clumsy, and it can literally turn into a sort of a balloon. Blowing themselves up helps them survive in the wild. They are inedible when swollen. Well, they're not entirely inedible even when they're deflated. Their poison is over a thousand times more toxic than cyanide. Don't count on antidotes, they just don't exist. Or probably, we need more time to find one. Not only can people become knights, but penguins can do that too. There's one living in Edinburgh, and it was granted knighthood back in 2008. Meet Nils Olaf III, the mascot and colonel-in-chief of the Norwegian King's Guard. So, what size of shoes do you wear? I bet it's way smaller than the size the Statue of Liberty wears. No statue needs shoes, but if the Statue of Liberty wanted to grab a pair of new sneakers, she'd need to look for size 879. No surprise here, she's 151 feet tall. 
These are our muscles that can cause goosebumps. These tiny fan-shaped muscles are called erector pili, and we have them at the base of every hair follicle. Whenever it's cold, they get contracted, which makes our hairs literally stand up, creating goosebumps. You may think you're not an athlete, but if you've ironed your clothes in very uncomfortable locations at least once, you already are. Well, sort of. Extreme ironing is an extreme sport where people take ironing boards to very unexpected places, such as forests, canoes, or mountains, and iron the clothes there. Some do that even on the top of bronze statues or underwater. And yeah, there are even official championships. Haven't these people heard of permanent press? Rap battles aren't something that appeared recently. In medieval England, there was something called flighting, which was very much like contemporary rap battles. It was quite popular in the 15th and 16th centuries, when two opponents mocked each other in an improvised battle. Tongue map says we have different parts for different tastes. Well, not really. There are individual taste buds that sense certain flavors more than they do with some others, but it doesn't mean one area can taste sweet better than the other. Studies show that all mouth areas have taste buds sensitive to all tastes. Chameleons don't change colors because they want to match their surroundings. That would probably be a very tiring thing to do. In reality, some other things, like mood, temperature, or the amount of light they get, affect their color. When chameleons relax and stretch cells, crystals that are inside of them are affected by the light. These reptiles use crystals to communicate with each other. So, for example, darker shades show that they're not in such a good mood. It's more like they feel kind of grumpy. Ah, beware the grumpy chameleon. Turkeys can blush just like people do. It works the same way. They blush when angry, excited, or even feel bad. You can see the skin on their necks and heads turn red. Opossums don't really sleep while hanging by their tails. You see that in cartoons and some photos, but in general, they don't. Their tails are strong, so these animals can grip branches and hold their weight, but only for shorter periods. Adults are really too heavy to stay in this position for too long, so they wouldn't get too much rest. So I could say, hanging by their tail overnight is sort of impossible. It's breakfast, and you crack open a hard-boiled egg. You find that it's green. Looks disgusting. Well, it looks like you cooked it for too long. This happened because of the thin sulfur layer in the whites and iron in the yolk. Though the mixture of these chemicals is black, it's such a thin layer mixed into the yellow yolk that it turns green. But don't fear, these strange green eggs, they're completely safe to eat. While sitting for a photo, it would be weird to say anything other than cheese to get that perfect smile. But in the 19th century, it was different. Photographers would ask their subjects to say prune instead. The reason was to obtain that thin, duck-like expression. It was considered a prim and proper way to present a photograph. Strawberries aren't even considered a berry and are more of a false fruit, further identified as multiple fruit. What we believe is that the tiny little brown or white things are seeds, but they're actually individual fruits attached to its flesh. But how did this mistake start in the first place? Well, the confusion began hundreds of years ago when it was first named. However, this was a long time before botanists were even around to help clarify this mistake. Sci-fi films are often inspired by real-life space exploration, but there is one thing that NASA implemented after watching a sci-fi movie. A 1929 flick, Woman in the Moon, introduced a countdown that built up anticipation. NASA found this helpful and started using it in 1969. Not only is it an exciting moment, but it does also have a practical use. It helps the massive team behind each launch ensure they're synchronized perfectly down to the last second. This one might change your appetite the next time you see a juicy apple. Usually picked around August to November, the shiny supermarket apples are covered in hot wax, then hot air dried and sent into cold storage. Before they arrive at the supermarket looking fresh, they've been in storage for anywhere between 6 to 12 months. I bet you can't do this. Try and hum while closing your nose. No noise came out, right? Without an exit for air, it's physically impossible to make any noise. The world's largest national park in Greenland covers a staggering 375,000 square miles. That's twice the size of California. 
But although it's huge, there are only up to 40 permanent residents in this massive area, making it one of the most isolated places on Earth. Issues with bad breath? Gum is the typical choice, but other things are just as effective. Cucumber is a great natural solution and a more efficient one. Working similarly to gum, it helps stimulate saliva production. But what makes it different from other odor defeaters is its water content. Washing away any unwanted pieces of food still remaining also helps to avoid a dry mouth, which causes odors. You would think that Z would be the last letter put into the alphabet, but it was actually J. Long ago in 1524, an Italian grammarian wanted to identify a way to separate I and J. Together, they were a vowel, and J was then used as a consonant that sounded like Y. It wasn't until 1633 when an English grammar book explained the proper use of J, and it was entered into the alphabet in the way we use it today. The first vacuum cleaner was invented in 1901, the size of a Winnebago, and it took four people to operate it. A petrol engine used to supply power also required a horse to move it around. I would suppose that it was mainly used for cleaning up after the horse in the end. It wasn't long after that they found easier ways to clean the house, and in 1910, the first handheld vacuum was invented. If you've been told that you sweat like a pig, there is no need to be offended. It's actually more of a compliment, as pigs don't sweat. All swine are born without sweat glands, and the only way to cool off is to find a nice puddle, or more famously, some mud. Umbrellas were invented around 4,000 years ago, and were only socially acceptable for women to use them. Their original purpose was to keep the sun out of your eyes and as a fashion accessory. It wasn't until the mid-18th century that men were allowed to use them, In the modern, water-resistant version we use today was made. And most importantly, the very first dog umbrella was invented in 1965. Dentists can be very strict on what sweets you eat, so you would be amazed to learn that cotton candy was invented by a dentist. John C. Wharton a dentist and confectioner wanted to give his clients a treat every visit. Hmm, maybe he gave them this treat to ensure they came back more often. If we could theoretically build a highway to outer space and could adjust the effects of gravity, it would only take you an hour to drive to space if you drove at 60 miles per hour. Let's make this happen, Elon Musk. How heavy could a cloud be? It looks like it couldn't weigh too much as it floats easily up in the sky. But a cloud could weigh anywhere up to 1 million pounds. That massive cloud is able to float above you because the air's lighter up there and less dense than dry air below. You can see the same effect when observing oil floating on water. You think you yawn because you were bored or tired? Well, it's a myth. You yawn more often later in the day, but it's just your body helping you remain alert. Through inhaling cool air and stretching the muscles, it cools the flow to the brain. Researchers identified brain sizes in different species of animals based on their yawns. The larger the brain, the longer the yawn. So how long do you yawn? Playing video games regularly increases gray matter in the brain for all you gamers out there, which helps to boost brain connectivity through muscle control, memories, perception, and spatial navigation. An experiment at a New York medical center found that surgeons who played three hours of video games made 37% fewer mistakes and performed 27% faster than other non-gaming doctors. Have you ever wanted to be just a little bit taller? Well, get your space boots on. The human body can grow up to 3% taller when in space. While living on Earth, our spines are compressed by gravity. But in zero gravity, the decompression lets the spinal discs expand, allowing the spine to lengthen. Cows don't have full REM sleep while standing, but they can have a light nap. This is an evolutionary trait that helped their ancestors avoid predators. They stand idle during a power nap if they need to make a quick getaway. They do have full REM sleep, only by lying down. They only need four hours of sleep to fully energize for the next day. Women have more taste buds than men, and 35% of women are considered super tasters, and only 15% of men are. Not surprisingly, more women prefer pineapple on their pizza. Now, don't be triggered if you disagree. While sleeping, you're incapable of sneezing. This might seem impossible, especially when you have a cold. 
But while your body is resting, the nerves that help you sneeze are as well. While you sleep, the brain ignores any irritating sensations or tickling that would typically create the sneeze. Our calendar year once used to end in February. This is because it was the last month to be added to the calendar. A calendar year once only lasted 304 days, so there was plenty of room for more months. It was changed in the year 46 BCE to the calendar we know today by Julius Caesar. They previously followed the lunar calendar. Julius Caesar saw issues with this as it didn't match the seasons. He hired an astronomer who created a calendar based on the solar year. Pockets are usually on the left side of shirts because most people are right-handed. Is this a myth or a fact? This is actually true. Many products favor the righties. Left-handed people will relate to this on so many levels. Let's say public transport. Have you ever noticed that the scanner at stations is typically on the right side? Household equipment and devices are one more example. Scissors, tweezers, bottle openers, and many other kitchen and household appliances are designed with right-handed people in mind. The same goes for shirt pockets. While some people use both hands equally and others change their hand preference between tasks, overall, most people are right-handed. A study has revealed that 75% to 90% of the world's population are right-handed and 10% are left-handed. This means it's more convenient for most people to have pockets on the left side than on the right side of their garments. Try it out for yourself. Your elbow kind of folds when you try to reach into the pocket on the right side. Whereas on the left side, your elbow makes an arc shape, which makes it easier to put things inside the pocket and take them out. Eating more protein leads to having bigger muscles. What do you think about this, bodybuilders? Myth or fact? This is a myth. It's true that eating protein is essential for building bigger muscles. I mean, proteins are building blocks of your body. And yet, eating more than you need is unnecessary. Everyone should drink 8 glasses of water a day. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? This is a myth, so don't blame yourself for drinking less water than recommended. 8 glasses are not a magic number. Hydration needs differ from one person to another. How much water you should drink every day depends on your activity and exercise level. The temperature of the place where you live affects this number too. If you live in a hot area, you sweat more and need to drink more water. Soup, coffee, tea, fruits, and other things you eat daily also contain water. Carrots are high in sugar, so you should avoid eating them. If this is true, we should warn bunnies. Any guesses? Fact or myth? It's a myth. Carrots are about 85% water. One pound of cooked carrots only contains three teaspoons of sugar. Compared to the amount of sugar in desserts, this is nothing. Plus, Carrots are high in phytochemicals, and eating them can help lower blood sugar. Medieval people believed in flat earth. Is this a myth or a fact? Obviously, flat earth is a myth. But so is the history built around this myth. You can't say that at those times. The whole world was skeptical about earth's spherical shape. Even everyday visible things prove that. For example, medieval people could see that the twilight glow during sunrise and sunset formed an arc over the horizon. Vikings wore horned helmets. Is this a myth or fact? The well-known image of a Viking warrior is almost always completed with a horned helmet, but in reality, there are no horns. There's no evidence that Viking helmets were horned. Detox juices cleanse your body. Is this a fact or myth? It's a myth. Detoxification doesn't work that way. Your internal organs are responsible for the process of cleansing the spleen, liver, kidneys, especially the liver. Your body is always in a natural state of cleansing itself. A person doesn't need to drink juices for detoxification. Nuts are junk food. Any thoughts? Myth or fact? You're right, this is a myth. Nuts are full of healthy fats. They're good for your heart and other organs. The average American throws away about 82 pounds of textile waste per year. Is this a fact or myth? Fact! Imagine all that waste. When someone throws their clothes away, they don't disappear into thin air. 
these items most likely reach landfills as their final destination. Donating clothes and selling them in second-hand stores are a much better option. Now, you've probably heard about life-saving laundry tricks that are said to make your clothes super clean and as good as they were on day one. What if those laundry tips are actually myths? I got three of them lined up for you. Shirts should be buttoned when you put them in the laundry. Is it true or not? This is a myth. You'd better keep zippers closed to keep their teeth from catching the fabric of other clothes. But fastening the buttons of a shirt can expand the button net and the button hole. In the long term, buttons will start slipping out of place. Washing clothes in hot water is the most effective way to clean them. Is this a myth or a fact? That's another laundry myth. You want to rid your clothes of germs, yet hot water alone won't be enough for this. Nowadays, many detergents can clean clothes in cold or warm water. You should remove stains from the face of the fabric. Is it true? Most people apply water and soap to the stain, starting from the front side of the fabric. But that's not the best option. A much better way is to start from the back. The stain can go deeper if you treat it from the front. Try to make the stain move up to the surface rather than push it inside. Listening to music is an effective tool for learning languages. Is it a myth or fact? It's a fact! Scientists say listening to a song and humming along can help you learn a language. Most people struggle to learn grammar, yet in our daily lives, we don't always follow grammar rules. Songs can help you pick up informal expressions. Scientists have also concluded that music can help you remember new words and add them to your vocabulary. Let me give you an example. It's from your first year at school. Yep, the alphabet song. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Either way, you might want to know these facts and myths about sleep. The longest someone went without sleep was 11 days. Do you think this is possible or is it an urban legend? This is a fact. Randy Gardner set the record for the longest amount of time a person went without sleep. It was an experiment carried out by Stanford sleep researcher Dr. William C. Demont. The doctor recorded and monitored Randy Gardner's sleep activity. Gardner managed to stay awake for 11 days and 25 minutes. Your body eventually gets used to getting less sleep. Myth or fact? It's a myth. There are many studies proving that your body and especially your brain can't get used to sleeping less. Have you noticed that after a few nights of insufficient sleep, you begin to feel groggier during the day? That's your body trying to adjust to not getting enough rest. Long-term sleep deprivation affects your daytime performance, focus, and decision-making. Many grown-ups need five or fewer hours of sleep. Can it be true? Well, this one's easy. It's a myth. Experts from the National Sleep Foundation recommend that the average adult sleeps seven to nine hours per night. Some people have a genetic mutation thanks to which they wake up refreshed after a short night's sleep, but such people are an exception. One in four million. The ability to fall asleep in any place and at any time means you're a good sleeper. What do you think? Myth or fact? It's a myth. A good sleeper gets a proper amount of sleep and has a regular sleep schedule. Cats spend two-thirds of their life asleep. Do you believe that? This will probably come as no surprise. It's a fact. How many of the facts and myths did you guess correctly? There are sharks that glow in the dark. For example, swell sharks. They live in the dark ocean depths, almost 1,700 feet under the surface. No one knows why exactly, but they emit a fluorescent glow only other swell sharks can see. Scientists detected the glow because they used filters that blocked out yellow light. They think that could be the way for these big fish to communicate with their buddies. This glow helps sharks fight infections on a microbial level. Cowbirds have secret passwords they use to recognize each other. They're a specific type of parasite bird since they lay their eggs in other bird species' nests. The young cowbirds have an inner mechanism where they recognize their species singing, like some sort of secret password only they know. That's how they manage to find others of their kind. A grizzly bear has an incredibly strong bite. It may look cute, but if you're close to this big guy, 
you better stay out of reach of its sharp claws and especially its mouth. Its bite force is more than 8 million pascals, which means it can crush a bowling ball. Some animals have skin-deep stripes and others have more superficial ones. Tigers are in the first group. Not only is their fur striped, but their skin is as well. It's the same with some other furry big cats, like snow leopards. Giraffes and zebras are in the second group, since they have patterns only on their coats. Speaking of zebras, do you think they're black with white stripes or white with black stripes? At first, it really looks like the second option is correct. Their black stripes mostly end towards the inside of their legs and on their bellies, and the rest of it is white. But that's not true. Surprisingly, they're black with white stripes. All of their fur, both white and black, grows from follicles that have something called melanocyte cells. All animals have these cells. They produce a pigment called melanin, and it gives color to their hair and skin. When it comes to zebras, chemical messengers tell which melanocytes send pigment to which area of fur. That's why zebras have a black and white pattern. But white is not actually its own pigment. It's an absence of melanin. So, black is their default color. Koalas have fingerprints that are so close to ours that they could even taint crime scenes. It doesn't seem like they have a lot in common with humans, but take a closer look at their hands. They have distinctive loops and arches. So if any koalas want to do something illegal, it would be a good idea for them to wear gloves. Ghost crabs growl when they're around creatures they don't like or find threatening. They do it using teeth in their stomachs. First, they'll let you know they'll defend themselves if you try anything by showing you their claws. If that doesn't work, they'll go for fearsome growling noises like dogs. But the noise is coming from rubbing their three elongated hard teeth inside their stomach. Ghost crabs produce the same noise when they're grinding up food. Speaking of teeth, did you know narwhal tusks are actually some sort of an inside-out tooth? Unlike the majority of other whales, narwhals are the ones that come with a large tusk or tooth that grows from the inside of their jaw. It has up to 10 million nerve endings and they're unprotected, which means its tusk is very sensitive to any type of contact. It's almost like a piece of skin because tusks usually don't have many nerve endings. Up to 95% of humans are right-handed and it's the same with bottlenose dolphins. There are even more right-handed ones among them than among humans. During one study, scientists found that bottlenose dolphins turn to their left side over 99% of the time, which means they're right-handed. They place their right side and right eye closer to the ocean floor as they go for prey, such as squids, shrimps, or smaller fish. More cool facts from the ocean. Did you know humpback whales use bubbles when they go after their prey? You might think they don't need any special method, considering how large they are. But when they're lurking for prey in the open waters, these whales team up and use something called a bubble net technique. While swimming in an upward spiral, they blow bubbles underwater. These bubbles make it difficult for fish to escape. The oldest evidence we have of domesticated cats dates up to 12,000 years ago. Researchers discovered this almost 20 years ago when they were digging through an ancient village in Cyprus. They found cat bones right next to human ones, which suggested they were close even when their lives came to an end. Humans were hunters, so they domesticated dogs first, somewhere up to 29,000 years ago. Dogs helped them catch other animals, but they didn't think they needed cats until they started to settle down and store surplus crops. Mice became frequent guests in grain stores, so cats came in handy in those times. Puffins are quite innovative when they want to scratch their bodies. They can surely be proud of their stunning beaks, but they obviously think it's not enough for scratching. Researchers noticed they tend to spontaneously take a small wooden stick to scratch an itchy spot. There's a special type of ant that only lives in a small part of Manhattan. The Broadway medians at the 63rd and 76th Street is the area these crawling critters decided was the best spot for them. The Manhattan looks like it's from Europe, but no European species can actually match it. Hey Potterheads, can you believe there's a thing like chocolate frog? 
Well, not quite, but it looks like it. New Guinea and Australia weren't always separated. They spent millions of years together until about 12,000 years ago, rising sea levels divided them. Since they were together for so long, some animals and plants still inhabit both areas, including green tree frogs. These frogs have spread really far and wide, and some of them, who live in hot, swampy regions surrounded by plenty of crocodiles, actually look like they're made of chocolate. We all know flamingos for their specific color, but they're not actually pink. They're born gray, and that's how they would stay if it weren't for their diet of blue-green algae and shrimp. These foods have a specific natural dye, which is why flamingo feathers turn pink over time. These little Tasmanian devils grow up and leave their moms. They socialize together, forming bonds that last for the rest of their lives. Not only them, cows also have stronger social ties than we think. They like to socialize, and they make long-lasting friendships. One research even discovered their heart rates significantly increase as a sign of stress when they're separated from their BFFs. Imagine you could simply freeze yourself solid during the cold winter days instead of listening to your teeth chatter and trying to tighten your jacket. That's what frogs can do. Aquatic frogs mostly hibernate underwater and spend most of the winter at the bottom of a pond, lake, or some other body of water. Toads and frogs are generally cold-blooded, which means the temperature of their body takes on the temperature of their surroundings. So, frogs can freeze during the winter because of a high concentration of sugar or glucose in their vital organs. Once they unfreeze, they continue as if nothing happened. Octopuses have three hearts and blue blood. They can move at speeds of 25 miles per hour, and they spray ink that not only blurs the predator's visual field, but actually harms them. Also, they have nine brains, the central one and eight smaller brains located in their arms. That's why their arms can open a shellfish while the central brain is busy doing something else. An octopus even tastes with its arms. They have cells in their suckers that enable the arms to touch and taste in a way that they detect chemicals marine creatures produce. That way, an octopus can distinguish prey from rocks. You have as much hair as a monkey. <laughs> now, I don't mean to be insulting, but your fingerprints are not unique. You can hear better after you cover your ears. Now, can these statements be true, or are they nothing but myths? When a person is lying, their own nose can give them away. Can it be true? Yep. Researchers from the University of Granada have discovered that when a person tells a lie, the temperature around their nose and in the inner corners of their eyes rises. This phenomenon got named the Pinocchio effect. Hey, how about this one? People can have as many hairs on their body as chimpanzees. Can you believe this? Surprisingly, this one's true too. The hair count of a person in a chimp, or any other ape of our size, is approximately the same. The only difference is that human body hair is quite fine and often colorless. This makes it hard to see the sheer number of hairs. Your lungs are identical. It sounds reasonable, but is it true? Well, it's nothing but a myth. Your left lung consists of two lobes, while your right lung is divided into three parts. Plus, the lung on the left is a bit smaller. It has to, to make room for your heart. By the way, your lungs also contain around 1,500 miles of airways. It's more than half the distance between New York and Los Angeles. There are also more than 300 million alveoli, tiny balloon-shaped air sacs, in your lungs. I bet you've heard this one before. Carrots can make your eyesight better. True or myth? Unfortunately, this idea isn't true. Neither can carrots get you better nighttime vision. Carrots are indeed packed with vitamin A. It benefits your body and protects your eyes. But even these veggies can't save you from wearing glasses if you need them. Some people sneeze when looking at the sun. Now, do they?
Yes, that's true. About 25% of people have an interesting reaction to sunlight. They sneeze. This phenomenon even has its own name. The photic sneeze reflex. Shaving body hair makes it grow darker and thicker. Is it the truth? Don't worry, that's just a myth. It might look as if your body hair has changed in thickness, rate of growth, or even color after getting shaved. But it's just an illusion. Shaving makes the tips of hair follicles blunt. That's why they look rougher and darker than usual. But once your hair grows in again, it'll start to look the same as it did before you shaved it. You have unique fingerprints. Ah, this one must be true, right? The problem with this statement is that scientists can't prove that each set of fingerprints is absolutely unique. It does seem to people, but it's impossible to check. And while this is improbable, people with identical fingerprints can actually turn out to be real. People have more than five senses. Is it an appealing myth or reality? There are five most obvious senses – vision, smell, touch, hearing, and taste. But how about thermoception, the sense of heat, nociception, the perception of pain, or the perception of your body awareness, proprioception, close your eyes and touch your nose, got it? That's proprioception and action. This list can be much longer. Some experts state people have from 21 to 53 senses. Your fingers actually get pruny after you spend too much time in the water for your safety. Is it true? What's your bet? Scientists believe so, but first things first, pruny fingers are caused by narrowing blood vessels. When you stay in the water for a long time, your nervous system makes your blood vessels shrink. Your body sends the blood away from that area, and this loss of blood makes your vessels thinner. The skin starts folding over them, forming those funny wrinkles. Scientists aren't 100% sure, but they think this process occurs to help you have a better grip when your hands and feet are wet. People only use 10% of their brains. Oh, how I wish it was just a myth! And it is! Apparently, you use almost 100% of your brain every day. This organ is active all the time, even when you're asleep. When you're snoozing, your frontal cortex, which is responsible for higher-level thinking, and the areas that help you sense your surrounding are still doing their job. For some people, the world is much brighter than for others. Hmm, how come? That's actually true! There are three kinds of cone cells in the average person's eyes. These cones help to recognize the colors in the blue, red, and green spectrums. Thanks to them, most people can distinguish around 1 million different shades. But those with technochromacy have four cones in their eyes. This feature allows them to see up to 100 million different hues. This vision anomaly is extremely rare, and women have it more often than men. But do you know the funniest thing about this? Most people with tetrachromacy don't even realize they see the world brighter than others. Sometimes you can hear better after closing your ears. Well, it seems counterproductive, but can it be true? Indeed, if you're in a loud place, for example, in a club or at a concert, you should close your ears to hear your friends better. Push the tragus which is the pointy skin-covered cartilage in front of your ear canal, into your ear. Then turn this ear toward your friend. Voila! You can prevent yourself from sneezing. Oh, that would be very convenient. But maybe it's just a myth. It's true. If you don't want to sneeze, press the skin on the bridge of your nose with your fingers. When you do it, your brain receives an alarm signal. It immediately puts the brakes on all other processes, including the sneezing reflex. Okay, you're gonna finish these five episodes of your favorite series now and catch up on sleep later, but can you? (laughs) 
Unfortunately, no. You can try to catch up on sleep at the weekend or take lots of afternoon naps during the week, but it won't help. Your body doesn't work this way. If you didn't have enough sleep the night before or went to bed really late, sleeping until noon won't save the day. Even worse, too much sleep will make you feel groggy. Some people have more ribs than others. Is it a myth? Nah, it's true! Most people have 12 pairs of ribs, which makes 24 in total. But 1 in 200 people has an additional 25th rib. It's called cervical and forms at the base of the neck above the collarbone. It can grow on the left, right, or even both sides of the body. Those people who have extra ribs most likely know nothing about this modification. That's because an extra rib rarely forms completely and can look like a thin strand of tissue. In this case, you won't see it even on an x-ray. You should wait for at least a half an hour after eating before you go swimming. Well, it sounds reasonable, but is it true? Ah, that's just a myth. The general idea behind this claim is that eating a large meal makes your blood flow towards your stomach to help with the digestion process. At the same time, your muscles don't get enough blood, which leads to cramps. But in reality, swimming right after having eaten something isn't dangerous at all. Your blood doesn't get diverted enough for it to cause any serious problems. Some people's snores can get louder than a working kitchen appliance. What do you think about this? Well, on average, when a person snores, the sound doesn't get louder than 60 decibels, which is as loud as a regular conversation. But sometimes, the noise level can reach 80 decibels, and that's as loud as a working food blender. Not all people have round pupils. Can it be true? Yup. Two people out of every 10,000 have an unusually shaped pupil. Most commonly, it resembles a keyhole. This eye disorder is called coloboma. Interestingly, some people with this condition don't have any problems with their vision. You find yourself at a food fair in Iceland when you see it for the first time. Volcano bread. You eat a slice and oddly enough, it actually tastes good. Unsure of how this works, you check out the baking process. Hmm. Is this kitchen really strange looking, or is it just me? The baking spot is in nature, specifically in a hot springs field. You better watch your steps so you don't get burned by the hot vapor jolting from the ground. Now, a local baker shares their traditional rye bread recipe with you. Rye flour, check. Yeast, check. You mix it all together and pour it into a metal pot. Next on the list is digging the hole where you'll place the pot to bake. You dig for about 16 inches until you can see the water bubbling from the ground. If you want to do it like a local, you'll use your finger to check the water temperature. Yikes, that's hot. Actually, the ground is heated by lava. Iceland is one of the most volcanic regions in the world with over 30 active volcanoes at any one time. After you bury the bread in volcanic soil, you leave it there and wait 24 hours until it's ready. The next day, the bread is fully baked and super tasty. Ah, and the best part is, you just participated in an ancient Icelandic tradition. People have been doing this since at least the 1800s. Imagine it's your first day of work in a museum, and your assigned task is to clean the mask of Tutankhamun. You grab your cleaning utensils and then, oh no, this can't be happening. You just broke Tutankhamun's beard. I never wish this to happen to anyone, but this is actually a true story. Back in 2014, an employee at the Egyptian Museum knocked off the beard of Tutankhamun's mask and glued it back on, hoping no one would notice. This mask was discovered in 1922 and is considered one of the 10 symbols of our human civilization. Oh, and the best part of this story? It took historians until 2016 to discover the poor glue job. So, if you visited the museum between 2004 and 2016, maybe you saw the glued beard. 
If I say Sahara, what comes to mind? An infinite desert landscape, right? Well, according to scientists, the Sahara isn't always a desert. From time to time, it becomes green. But you probably won't be seeing this in your lifetime. Every 10,000 years, the Sahara lives through a humid period, where the sand gives way to lush green vegetation and sparkling lakes. This happens due to a tilt in the Earth's axis which affects different weather patterns around the globe. Can you imagine the Sphinx surrounded by rainforest? It's mind-blowing. And speaking of the Sahara, say you traveled back to 1800 BCE. If you timed it right, you might get to see the construction of the so-called Black Pyramid in the city of Dashur. These are not the famous Giza pyramids, but they serve the similar purpose of being a final resting place. In 1892, Archaeologists excavating the area found an important part of the Black Pyramid that was lost for centuries. The Benben, also called a Pyramidian, was the tip of ancient Egyptian pyramids. A Benben consists of a solid block, usually made of limestone. Most of them were covered with gold and reflected the first rays of light from the sun every day. Hmm, can anyone get me a time machine, please? Remember when you ate something really spicy, your cheeks turned red? Apparently, that can happen to birds too. For example, canaries can change colors after eating peppers. These birds have a special pigment that allows them to switch shades depending on their diet. So, if a yellow canary eats red peppers, it can turn orange or red. Can rocks move on the ground on their own? Well, you might be under that impression if you visit Racetrack Playa in California. The site is a dry lake bed and home to one of the world's strangest phenomena, the so-called sailing stones. Think 100-pound rocks moving around alone, leaving behind trails as long as 1,500 feet. They were discovered in the 1900s, and until recently, no one was lucky enough to be on the site while they were moving. It was only in 2014, after much observation and research, that scientists solved this mystery. The sailing stones appeared because of the perfect balance between wind, ice, and water. When it rains, the water that falls on the ground freezes and forms a coat of ice above the ground. If it's windy, the rocks are easily pushed around, sailing along the lake bed. But hey, if you ever visit Racetrack Playa, don't disturb the rocks. On the western coast of France, you'll find the vacation hotspot known as the Island of Ray. It attracts tourists looking for scenic landscapes and beautiful beaches, but that's not all it's famous for. There, an extraordinary phenomenon occurs when two different wave patterns collide with each other, something called a cross sea. It's almost as if the sea were a checkerboard divided into hundreds of squares. And no, it's not an optical illusion. A cross sea only happens in places where different quality waters meet. For a tourist to see the cross sea in Ray, this probably means that there was a storm in a different sea nearby. This stormy water travels with the help of currents and meets the water of Ray, creating these oddly shaped riptides. Oh, and apart from this island and Israel, there's nowhere else in the world where you could see such a thing. The following site will either give you goosebumps or make you marvel at its weirdness. I'd say it depends on the time of day you visit. Next to the small town of Grifina in Poland, you'll find a very unusual site, a pine tree forest where each tree is bent at its base. If you visit during the daytime, I guess you'll be fascinated by these trees' sharp 90-degree curves. You can even use their trunks as a stool if you decide to have a picnic, for example. But visiting the site at night will most likely give you chills. A thin layer of fog hovers around, making the forest seem quite unwelcoming. Scientists still can't explain why the trees are the way they are. So, are you a daytime or nighttime visitor? You went for a hike and suddenly encountered a big cloud of fog. This may ruin your photo ops, but there's one thing you can hope for. Foggy days are the perfect conditions for a phenomenon called fog bow, otherwise known as a white rainbow. This happens because of numerous tiny water droplets that cause fog, smaller than 0.002 inches. So, instead of the multicolored bow, you get a transparent one, with red outer edges and a bluish inner edge. 
Now, say you're roaming in a little town in Europe, appreciating the century-old buildings and good summer weather. You feel hungry and decide to type into your Google Maps the name of that restaurant your friend recommended. Ah, it's only 10 minutes away by foot. You follow the blue dot on your GPS and arrive at your destination, quick and easy. We all love this free piece of technology, don't we? But what if I told you that the US spends over $2 million daily to maintain the satellites to make it work? Yep, that's the price. And to implement it, they spent over 12 billion US dollars. Have you ever heard of something called a natural snowball? This could be proof that nature is really perfect. In 2016, the beaches of the Gulf of Ob in northwest Siberia were filled with rows of giant snowballs. Think balls measuring up to three feet across. This rare yet beautiful natural phenomenon happens when small pieces of ice are rolled by strong winds and water. The further they roll, the more ice they gather and the more that ice is polished. They end up as giant, perfectly shaped snowballs. They look pretty amazing on their own, but it's quite a sight when hundreds of them are together. In the airport, they usually ask you to take your laptop out of your backpack and put it in a separate bin while going through the security check. Laptops are dense and the x-rays can't see through them, so you could be hiding something dangerous there. If it's out and it's on its own in a separate bin, it's easier for the scanners to capture a prospective hazard. Normally, the messages you send using iMessage are blue, but look, this time it turned green. No need to panic, it's not like the user blocked you or anything, it's just that you sent a regular SMS and not an iMessage. iMessages can only be sent to people who own an Apple device, so if the recipient doesn't have one, they're all gonna be green. Another reason your phone might opt for an SMS is that your iPhone isn't connected to the internet iMessages go through the web, and SMS uses a cellular signal. The jacks you put in your devices have little plastic rings on them that separate different sections. These sections are called pins, and each of them serves a different purpose. Each plug will have at least one plastic ring because any plug must be separated into at least two pins. One of them is there to cancel out any interference, and the other to carry the signal. If, for example, your headphones have one ring and two sections, they have a mono playback. They deliver the same sound to both your right and your left ear. If there are two rings and three sections, then there is a basic one to cancel out interference and the other two for either ear. Three rings and four sections mean that you have a set, one basic, one for either of the ears, and the last one is the microphone pin. I bet you've never even noticed, but all credit cards, no matter what bank or country they come from, are the exact same size. The first ever credit card was issued in 1958 by the Bank of America. And later, the international standard was established for every issuer around the world to follow. The standard dictates both the proportions and the thickness. Whistles can work perfectly fine even if they don't have that ball inside, yet they all have it. That's because even though there's a sound without the ball, the noise it creates is very flat and not distinguishable enough. When you blow, the ball starts moving around inside, creating different pitches and making the noise more noticeable. Jeans have had those metal rivets ever since they were invented. Jacob Davis, the man who made the first pair of jeans, added copper rivets to those spots where the pants were more likely to rip to make them stronger. Today, they have more of a decorative purpose because they're distinctive and traditional for jeans. A basketball has little dots all over its surface and they serve as friction points. It's important for that ball not to slip out of the hands. There were times when they played basketball with a soccer ball. The floor was very slippery and it was impossible to play because you'd have to be very careful just to keep the ball in place. So, they had to redesign it. The more points of contact any object has with some surface, the more friction there is, and the less likely it is to slip on the surface. So, that's how the ball got its dots. Those holes at the end of the handles aren't just there for you to hang your pans easily. You can also place your cooking spoon in there while making a meal. It'll hang right above the pan, and the sauce won't spill around. Make sure to tap off the sauce or food beforehand, though. 
so that it doesn't go down the spoon's handle. You unload the dishwasher, and while everything is dry, your plastic containers get all wet once again. Seems like they never get dry, and that's actually true. The reason for it is the material. The dishes heat up and cool down slowly, so the remaining water evaporates and dries out easily. When you take out those plastic containers, they cool down way too fast, so the water doesn't dry out of the surface and just stays there. Another water source is those upside-down cups that collect water on top. But have you noticed that cups have chips on the bottom? They serve as a water drain in the dishwasher. So yeah, these cups don't accumulate water in the dishwasher. Take a look at aluminum foil. One side of it is always shiny, and the other one is dull. When producing the foil, they flatten it with rollers. It's so thin that the rollers tear it. So they take two layers at a time so the sides facing the roller remain shiny, and those in the middle stay dull. We say it all the time, 2 a.m. and 2 p.m., without thinking. Why such a choice of letters? It's just Latin, which is still used for many other abbreviations. A.m. stands for ante meridium, which means before noon. P.m. stands for post meridium, meaning afternoon. Same with pounds, which are noted as LB, from the Latin phrase Libra Pondo. Most movie theater seats are red, and the reason isn't better visibility, but quite the opposite. In low-light conditions, red is the first color that fades away in our eyes. And that's what we want in a movie theater, to see nothing but the screen. Also, movie theaters were inspired by fancy Italian opera houses, so that's another reason too. Have you ever wondered why so many Disney characters wear white gloves? Well, back when animated movies were black and white, putting white gloves on characters was a way to make the hands stand out from the rest of the body. Then animation evolved, but the gloves stayed as a Disney tradition. But there are other reasons too. Human hands make animal characters more humanized and relatable. Also, those gloves are way easier to animate, which speeds up the process. Cats often rub their bodies against your legs, but do you know why they do it? This way, they transfer their scent to you, marking you as their territory and as their human. It's also a sign of affection. By doing this, they show that you're part of their inner circle. Wonder why it's so hard to swat a fly? Well, to a fly, we're sloths. That's because they see things in slow motion compared to us. Species have a different perception of speed. The speed we see will be twice as fast for a turtle, and it will be four times slower for a fly. Turn a video to 0.25 speed and imagine someone approaching you at this pace. Well, that's how a fly sees you. So yeah, it has enough time to escape. Road signs have different shapes and colors to send different signals to your brain. Oval shapes are more friendly, and squared ones are very familiar and secure, so they're usually regulatory. Triangles reflect instability, so they're usually warning signs. And finally, the stop sign has a special octagon shape, the most unusual and unsettling. It's supposed to draw your attention to it. Together with the red color, this sign stands out the most, just like it's supposed to. Some sidewalks have little plates with bumps on them. We don't pay much attention to them, but they're very important for visually impaired people. They signal a slope that then leads to a crosswalk. Also, there are several patterns that signal different things. Name the school grades. A, B, C, D, and F. No, E, but why? The modern grading system dates back to 1897. In the beginning, it was all the letters from A to E. A meant excellent, B was good, C was fair, and D was passed. Below that was an E, or fail, which was often confused with the opposite, excellent. So soon enough, it was changed. F for fail is way more intuitive. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos 